Hi, and welcome to the Blue Couch. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. It's nice to have you here. Um, Germany will take delivery for their first Poseidon 8A maritime patrol aircraft in 2024. What capabilities will it bring to the German Navy? So uh, we're really proud of uh, the P-8 program and very excited that uh, Germany selected the, the P-8 to be its successor for the, its P-3. Um, the P-8's in operation right now with the US Navy and several other international partners. And what it brings specifically is the most advanced anti-submarine warfare aircraft in, in the world today. As far as um, specific capability, it's, its range, its endurance, uh, which is also coupled by the fact that it has an air-to-air -air refueling capability, allows it to stay on station for longer. And then importantly, its ability to be able to uh, detect, localize, track submarines and also respond in the case of a hostile submarine. So it's equipped with 129 sonar buoys, which are used to um, you know, detect and track submarines. It has a weapons bay that carries torpedoes that can be used to respond to a hostile submarine, as well as capabilities to do a range of other missions beyond the anti-submarine warfare domain. So um, one of the key attributes of the P-8 is its ability to be a multi-mission aircraft. So in both uh, anti-submarine warfare, but also uh, anti-surface warfare, it carries uh, um, harpoon, um, air to surface missiles, as well as a radar, electronic support measures, and uh, infrared cameras. All these things are, are, are available to allow the aircraft to go out there and build up a maritime domain awareness picture. So you know, it's a great capability. And more importantly, um, I think for all of our customers, is the fact that the P-8 not only is capable, but it's been one of the best run programs in the US DOD. It delivered every aircraft on or ahead of schedule. There's been enormous savings from the production uh, efficiencies. And also its availability being off the legacy 737 means that you've got an enormous commercial supply chain to ensure that uh, availability uh, aspects are addressed really well. Yeah. Um the German government has down-selected the um, Chinook 47 for its heavy lift mission requirement. What is your plan to partner with the German industry to support Germany's Chinook fleet in country? That's a great question. So uh, one of the things um, that's really important, not just in Germany, but all around Europe and, and in fact most around the globe, is the importance of industrial self-reliance. Uh, and that's important because it brings a lot of things. It brings not just prosperity to local industry, but it ensures that the you know the local um, customer, in the case the, the the Germans, they will be able to ensure that the aircraft is both supported and sustained indigenously. So you're not reliant on uh, the U.S. supply system necessarily. Um, that increases availability and it also improves affordability benefits. So we've been excited. We've actually uh, teamed with a number of, of very key um, German industries, uh, namely Luftwanze Technik, um, uh, Airbus, uh, CAE, uh, ESG and Rolls-Royce, uh, you know, amongst uh, you know, a few of the key partners. So our important uh, approach here is to ensure that we've got uh, a good industrial partnering arrangement with all these key um, uh, industrial uh, members and that the support of the Chinook is uh, is done in a way that uh, meets all of the German uh, requirements. Another topic is digitization. It's one of the most important topic at the moment. Um, how do you see from a Boeing perspective digital technologies impacting Warfighting capabilities in the future. Yeah, it's a it's a critical part of what we're doing moving forward, um, both on the production and the sustainment uh, aspects for uh, all of our programs. So um, one example is is our digital engineering. So we have just developed the T7A training aircraft using uh, you know digital model engineering and being able to to do all this in you know, a digital environment ensures that not only you can sort of streamline and, and expedite the, the engineering process, it allows for you to do it in such a streamlined and efficient way 
uh, in the case of T7, we had the aircraft designed on a computer screen. Within 36 months, the aircraft was flying. Now that's quite incredible. And uh, with our partner Saab, uh, where we, you know, we built one half of the aircraft, they built the other half. It was able to be brought to St. Louis and, and spliced very quickly on the same day. Everything fit perfectly and the aircraft is, is doing a phenomenal job. Uh, along the same lines, um, we're doing similar things with um, the MQ-28 Ghost Bat. And one of the key initiatives is, is making it modularized. So ensuring that um, everything could be customized for each you know, unique customer requirements is an important feature. With the MQ-28, it has a modularized um, nose cone, so you can put in different sensors. Um, that's, that's important for many reasons. Number one, it allows you to address um, you know, your own unique requirements, but it also means you can do things much more quickly. So you're not waiting for expensive upgrade programs. You've got a you know, digital solution that allows you to do things far more efficiently moving forward. And then lastly, we're starting to use the digital transformation aspects for the way we support aircraft too, getting into like predictive maintenance. So we're not caught you know, surprised by failures. We're starting to get ahead of where we think, think things are going to start to require uh, you know, different sparing um, arrangements. And that ensures that both uh, we're both efficient, but also able to address availability and readiness concerns as well. Very exciting and for the future, um, a very interesting topic. Thank you very much to be here on the Blue Couch. Okay, thanks for having me. <laughs> My pleasure.